or the thing you m mostly contribute to the team at Neon Appeal yep. is you are the SEO guy. Yes. And you are also the AI guy. Yes. So tell us a little bit about SEO. Tell us about how you're using that to help your customers. Right. And then, like, let's mix in how you're using AI to help your clients as well. Okay. So real broad strokes on SEO. Um, my philosophy when it comes to the building and prosperity of a website is research. If you don't know what you're up against, if you don't know what you're trying to do, then you're going to be stuck. You're going to be blindfolded. And I come from a research background, so there's a lot that can be deciphered when you actually just look at what you want to do and who you're up against. Now, SEO incorporates probably nine different disciplines. I focus on research and data because if I'm going to be able to say this is what we should do, I should have something to back it up. I'm not just going to go off emotions and a lot and illogical mm -hmm. thinking. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people in the SEO world still run on emotions. Like they know the algorithm, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I want to, I want to, before you go any further, I want to dive into something I hear a lot. Yep. Um, and that is, I don't need a website. I don't need SEO because I have Facebook or I have Instagram. And so, and, and, and I think for certain kinds of businesses, that true, that's true. So what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, it is based upon, there's very few businesses that can just rely on Facebook. You're within mm -hmm. their ecosystem, right? So you're not really going to understand the analytics of keyword research when you have a profile on a website. If you have your own website, you can find how many people have been there, how long were they were there for, what were the terms that they used to find your web page on. You can't necessarily do that with Facebook. You can check audience, likes, mm -hmm. shares, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Now if you can run a business through and, Meta. And you can do that now. You can do that now. Because remember, there used to be a bunch of metrics on Facebook that we oh, used yeah. to, that you and I used to look at <laughs> yeah. that are no longer there. Yeah. Um, you can run through Meta uh, a Facebook business. It's just not going to be competitive. That's the problem. You're not going to be able to understand that who else is in your ecosystem, what they're doing differently, and what you can do to defeat them. Okay. Only within the Facebook groups and only within your friends and only within the people you invite. So it's a very closed closet. Mm -hmm. With a f website, you open yourself up to the world. Okay, so let's let's dig into that a little bit. How does a website and how broad brush strokes and yep. how does SEO make you competitive? Because <laughs> you and I could talk like nerd data stuff oh, all yeah, day yeah, long. Yeah. Um, so a website basically is your best paid employee that tells you everything that you do why you do it, where you do it, when they can contact you, and it sets up terms for you to be searched. Now, without the, with the broad strokes, keyword development is probably the most important thing in the beginning of a website. You just got to know what it is you want to be looking for. Now, for certain businesses like yours, mm -hmm. we have seen in the SEO world using a face for the service helps immensely other than just a generic one page yep gotta have someone because we're still human beings at the end of the day and we want to see the person we want to trust with yeah, our money we're, we're in a we're in an era where personal branding and i don't know if it's ever going to change maybe it will maybe it won't you know things nothing lasts forever but i mean personal branding having a face on something seems to be so important that, today i'll be honest that's the evolution of seo it is not about the small little things it's about building a brand because mm -hmm. brands sell mm -hmm. you can sell a product on shopify you can sell mm -hmm. a product on etsy but if you want to build a brand you have to use seo to build it mm -hmm. you know and that's the evolution of it you know and it's going to get more and more complex as we move forward now you and i talked yesterday about there was some big news in the SEO world a couple <laughs> yeah. months ago, and a lot of what people thought about SEO got turned on oh, its yeah. head. So, like, how? What is that? What got turned on its head? What's What's new? What do we need to know? And if you're a business owner, um, whether you're a tech startup or any kind of entrepreneur, what do What do they need to know about what's not necessarily what's changed in SEO, but what's the new knowledge about SEO? That, that business owners need to know when they're considering that decision of, is this something I want to spend my time or my money on? Right. So a few weeks ago, there was a huge data dump in which someone was able to grab around 2,000 documentation, uh, pieces of documentation, 
and dispelled it to the world about what actually works for ranking on Google. Mm-hmm. Now, there were theories during the Supreme Court case of Google for the um, uh, monopoly case. Google had to dispel some things. Mm-hmm. So they dispelled things from the 90s. And from that, then this was within three months ago, SEOs kind of took it apart and said, okay, if this is what they're saying back in the 90s, let's poll and see what it means today. Now that isn't the case. Those 2,000 pieces of documentation actually talk about what Google is using. Now, without going into very specific things, we in the SEO world thought there were four things that mattered. Four things that matter for ranking. Mm-hmm. Keywords, content, backlinks, and on-page SEO, or which is known as technical SEO. Mm-hmm. All that got wiped out, and it just became backlinks. Now, there were other people that thought that backlinks in the SEO world, backlinks were becoming irrelevant. Mm-hmm. They didn't matter anymore because... And, and can you describe to everybody what a backlink, backlink is? Backlink, excellent. Backlink is when on a web page you have a hyperlink that goes to another web page or to a document or to an article, and that person reciprocates to back to you. Mm-hmm. Now, there's also inferring that even if you have a hyperlink on a post, that's considered a backlink, mm-hmm. but... Facebook has set up their system to where they won't register a backlink on a backlink profile. It's just too big because everyone would have a Facebook backlink, Mm -hmm. right? So they said, you're not going to do that, right? So it becomes a social media, which is a referral, right? But if I wrote an article and I gave it to you and I said, just put my link on the bottom and Mm -hmm. you said, okay, I'm going to do that. And then I say, read Jason's article on my website and they click the link. You get the backlink. I get the backlink. So what we want as business owners for our website is we want lots of other websites linking back to our website right. because that gives us credibility that 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 lets a search engine know we've got credibility because people are referencing our website right. and the idea back months ago was that backlinks were an old fossilized networking system they didn't apply anymore because the internet got so big that there was no need for it anymore well not with this data dump it's more important mm-hmm. than ever now because google isn't going to change what they're going to do you want backlinks, you're going to have to get them. You want higher backlinks, if you ever get an article posted on the Wall Street Journal, mm-hmm. you will see a spike, but you got to keep that spike. Yep. Otherwise, it drops down. So that's where backlink content is very, very important. It's SEOs, I hated doing backlink research. I hated doing backlink outreach, but now it has to be a part of the system. Yeah. Because every business that does not have a backlink strategy, they're not going to get any views, and it will be shown. They're just not going to get anything. So, again, like with yours, we got to talk about a backlink strategy now. So if you're wondering why you're not getting the (laughs) website traffic you would like to be getting, it might be that you don't have enough backlinks to highly credible websites out there. So now one of the things you do really well, one of the things you've really embraced over the last couple of years is using AI, generative AI, Mm -hmm. to help do the work. You know, to, you know, in the case of backlinks, we're doing that to generate articles and and blog posts and that kind of stuff. So how are you using AI to, one, lower your own workload and and two, help out your clients? I would say AI has saved me another employee for at least training in my analyst thinking. Mm -hmm. It can do it for me. It's not perfect, but it's close. Um, AI is going to be the way in which we talk to get more to get more information. It's not conclusive, it's just an idea, right? So say we want to rank for the keyword gardens in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that we find as many gardens in Las Vegas related keywords. Now we're gonna build an AI model about talking about gardens in Las Vegas Mm -hmm. that's engaging to gardeners and to people looking to start a garden. We're going to run that, but the problem is that people can run that prompt Then they post it, and then they get kicked off because it plagiarized. Mm -hmm. you got to have a contingency plan on the back end to get rid of that plagiarism. So what do you do? Because that's all – like for a lot of us who have done um, writing, who have done research work, like we understand uh, what a big deal plagiarism is. And, Mm -hmm. you you know, in the old days before AI, you were – if you were researching something, you were going to write something, you were going to publish in some way, whether it was just on your website or an an official publication. We were always very careful about that. So, but 
one of the things I heard someone describe is that AI always wants to please you. Yep. And so what it do, and, and it does a lot of other things, but in this case, it goes and it, it goes and finds something that it thinks you are going to like to hear, and then it it puts that in right. Right. And what it, what it might be doing is taking somebody else's intellectual property, somebody else's thought work. And handing it to you as if AI did that itself. Exactly. Right? So how do you combat that? What do you, what are the checks and balances you put into your workflow to do that? So the one thing that I would do is you want to make sure that you have a very clear and concise prompt before you even hit enter and get a result. You got to know what it is you want the AI to do for mm -hmm. you. And you also want to give it multiple options. You don't want just a one and done. Mm -hmm. You want three, four, five different options. That way you can still use your human mind to say that's good that's not good that's better that's best mm -hmm. right have it write the program and as we do with you get it checked read it yep. read over it right if you don't know if you don't know what's being written then you can't co-sign on it being on your website yeah i know i know it's super annoying to eric and his partner gia but every everything they generate for me i, I like i read all of it you like, have to i wouldn't say that yep. i don't know let's let's get a reference for that let's, oh, yeah. let's you know let's vague let's after that's done, it, it should always go through a plagiarism checker. We do not want to get in trouble with the algorithm theory and other people that have written things like it, right? Generally, you're pretty much good to go if you just mm -hmm. run it through an algorithm check, and then you can post it. However, we also want to add an image. People respond to images. Yep. They like an image, and then they flow right to the article, right? Um, also having links outside of the bottom of the, the blog to go to other blogs or to other products and services mm -hmm. because that's really establishing, like you and I have talked about, the EEAT. Mm -hmm. It is a bedrock of SEO. It isn't going away. They'll probably add more letters yep. in the next 10 years anyway. So what's EEAT? <laughs> EAT stands for Expertise, Experience, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness. It is the absolute needed formula for success. If you want to stand out, you're going to have to talk about why you should be the best at what mm -hmm. you do. And that's what you want to remember. Absolutely. EEAT. -E EEAT. -E yep. Yep. Experience. Experience, expertise. Expertise, authority, authoritative, and authoritative and trustworthiness. And trustworthiness. And you can incorporate that into everything that you post, everything that you have on your website, anything that you do for your videos. EAT is the guaranteed success. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people... They also have to use other elements to make it more engaging. That's the problem is that you may yeah. be the best, nope. but how are you engaging to be the best? Nowhere, nowhere in those letters does it say <laughs> does it say pleasant or fun to be no, around. No, 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 no. This is war. This is business. You gotta you gotta put yourself out there and yeah. put your stake in the sand, you know? So yeah, that's uh it's very interesting time for SEO. Um there are the good and the bad and the ugly. There yeah. are there are ones that I see like I don't think you guys know what you're doing. And then there's ones like wow, you guys have hundreds of thousands of backlinks, mm -hmm. hundred keywords, thousands of people have used, mm -hmm. and it's just a content running machine. Mm -hmm. It's something that, at least in my opinion, SEO is going to be a specific type of occupation mm -hmm. that a person's going to want to find. Yeah, I think you so. know what I mean. So. Um, like a mechanic, like an attorney, like an mm -hmm. accountant, you know, you're going to say, okay, who's the SEO that I need to talk to? Yep. And then I took on, take a look under the hood and I let you know what's going on. Like yeah. we got to replace that hose. We got to Absolutely. replace this cylinder. This is shot. <laughs> so what, uh, what are the trends we should be looking at at SEO? What, uh, what should we to, to look ahead to the next six, 12, 18 months? What should we, what should we be looking ahead to? Backlinks are going to be the, the hot buzzword without a doubt. Everyone's going to want to know how to get quick backlinks, how to pay for expensive backlinks. Um, content, especially video, that isn't going away anytime soon. However, video for just video sake is not going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to be more programmed. Mm -hmm. There has to be a, there has to be. <laughs> Go on. I'll make my joke in a minute. I, it has, there has to be an intention with it, right? If you're going to put something on the internet, it better have a reason for its existence and then a flow to something else. That's the way it's so gonna like happen. TV in the nineteen fifties. <laughs> Telling you. And we're and we're and we're back full circle. I folks. know you're gonna have a cigarette in your mouth. Uh, I will not have Marvel. a cigarette in my mouth, but this is Jason, but, this is Jason but, uh, <laughs> I might I might have a cocktail though. Um honestly, yes, if anybody is watching this stream and they want to be on the stream and you want to bring me a beer from downstairs to the bar, into it. Absolutely into it. So, uh, so that's hilarious. Um so that's the trend. So 
this is a lot to keep track of. Of course. What are some of your favorite info sources on learning about SEO? Because because a couple of years ago when you and I met, this was new to you. Oh, yeah. So so what are your what are your some of your favorite sources for learning about SEO, keeping up with what's going on with SEO and then helping you predict the trends in SEO? So really, there's there's two sites, websites out there. Search Engine Journal, SEJ. Uh, they are probably the de facto website on any and everything that's going on. There are hundreds of books that break down everything about SEO. Mm-hmm. They're free to download, but you got to have your own uh, email address for it. You can't use a Gmail. Um, that is where 80%. You can't use a Gmail. You can't use a Gmail. Oh, that's I know. interesting. You know, somebody, SEOs, somebody SEOs. doesn't like Google. Well, and the thing is, they want you to fill out all these prompts, all these texts, like what's your name? You can't be just a regular person. You have to have an agency or you mm-hmm. have to be an owner of an agency. You have to have a website. So it's for pros. It's for the pro people. And obviously, they want marketing material below it. But that one website has dispelled so much misinformation about the SEO world because everything's broken down to a PDF. You can read mm-hmm. about what's going on from 2023 mm-hmm. this evening if you wanted to. But the thing is, is that because of all these things that are happening, they're constantly pushing new PDFs, new documentation. Yeah. Um, the other one is Search Engine Land, so SEL. That one is very, very technical. Mm-hmm. That's the one you go to when there's an algorithm change and you've dipped 35% in your views and you need to know why. This website will tell you what, what, what was that prompt, what was that algorithm change about. Mm-hmm. And if it affected your business, they'll help you get it back up. Okay. Um, lots of technical stuff okay. on there. So so really technical. So go check out these websites. And then when you don't understand what you're looking at, <laughs> call Eric and he will help you. Because um, I've already read it by that so, by the time you go to it. <laughs> so same same question, yeah. but for AI. What's your source of info for learning AI stuff? Because because again you're not you're not AI for AI's sake. It's not a technical curiosity to you. It's not you're not trying to push forward the the state of the technology. You're trying right. to use it to run a business. Um, there is a add-on to ChatGPT called ARPRM, AIPRM. Um, that one breaks down prompting into prompting. <laughs> okay. Tell it what you want it to do, and it'll write the prompt for you. Copy paste. So it's a it's a prompt engineering plug. Right. That gives you a better idea of the specifics of where you want to go so that you save more time instead of like, well, I want to be engaging. I want to be professional. I want it to go after I want this this prompt to give me a list of things for kids to do. This helps at least to spell some of it because you can go right into a kid prompt and write what you need in your language mm-hmm. for the prompt. So um I haven't really messed around with any websites that mm-hmm. spe- spe- are specific to AI. However, AI is bled into those search engine uh, websites as well because it's so integral to SEO. It's all kind of blurring together. It all is. Right. There's a lot of things going on. Right. So before we let you go, yep. best tip for beginners starting with AI, whatever the whatever the platform they're using is. Um, write a prompt. If you're starting a business, write a prompt for the audiences that this product or service could go to. Number one, you got to know what the bucket is that you're going into before you even make a bucket. Mm -hmm. Um, Ask it for Facebook groups, because if we're talking about building an Instagram and a Facebook business page, you're going to want AI to give you a list of what is out there already. Mm -hmm. And then number three, uh, give it a keyword list. And put those keywords into Google and see what shows up. So great tips for training your AI before you even ask it a question. So do yeah. these three do these three things first to start training your AI. Absolutely. Your it's, AI. It sets you up. It saves you probably like three, four months of work. And it saves you a lot of headache for figuring out yourself because yeah. you probably don't even know what's out there. Awesome. Well, look at that camera. Tell everyone where they can find you. Anyway, um, my website is seoexpertlasvegas.com. I'm Eric Lacoste. I also am the co-owner of NeonAppeal.com. Um, I am on all the platforms. Uh, my YouTube channel, SEO Expert Las Vegas. Uh, I don't have as many videos as you, Jason. I'm trying to catch up, but uh... hey, you probably have more followers <laughs> and more traffic, though. So. <laughs> I haven't used AI for it yet, but I'm getting there. So uh, anyway, yeah, uh, follow my socials, follow my YouTube channel. Uh, if you have any questions about SEO related stuff, I'm sure you can contact Jason and Jason will give it to me. Yeah, hit me up. We'll, we'll connect you guys. Yeah.
anyway. So awesome. Well, go get some lunch. I can smell it from here. It's, it smells really good. So go get some lunch and some water too. And uh, some water, yeah, for sure. It's, it's getting warm. Um, 